It's finally happened. I have been converted to the way of the scrapper. In all seriousness, this build is incredibly strong and has two very useful versions that can be swapped easily with just a few different trinkets, skills, and a single trait. Power Scrapper offers solid damage per second, great utility with some nifty carry potential, and even quickness for your group if the situation calls for it. All of that combined with by far the most impenetrable defenses out of any profession. Yes, even Scourge. It's so good it's worth putting a number on it right now. In a raid situation, you'll be gaining upwards of 3,000 barrier per second, meaning that if your tank hasn't got a clue, then you'll be able to step up in that regard as well. Truly a build worthy of the versatility of Engineer. Super Speed also makes a heavy feature, so with that in mind, let us zoom into the details. First up are the trait lines. Scrapper is where everything originates, and the traits held within provide some benefits that you just won't find anywhere else in the game. The first of which is a huge amount of super speed to your party. Gyroscopic acceleration enlarges gyros and grants super speed when they end, and speed of synergy applies area super speed on using your heal skill, and even more super speed just for you on your heal tool belt skill. All of that, combined with, as you might expect, a good assortment of gyros, will give you permanent super speed, and also very high uptime for your team as well. Don't underestimate this benefit. Movement speed is often overlooked in endgame scenarios, but it's actually very strong. Super speed in combat lets you zoom around as fast as out of combat swiftness, and it can be extremely useful to run away from a dangerous mechanic, get to a green circle faster, or get to an ally in need just in time. It also provides a significant counter to being slowed down, so Cripple and Chill will be significantly less effective. The fun doesn't end there though. Object in motion is some free damage from things we have very often. Stability, swiftness, and super speed will all grunt an extra 5% damage. This will be 10% most of the time, but if you do happen to have high stability uptime, it's even better. To get the best value out of this, try to maintain as much super speed as possible. Impact Savant is the Scrapper trade-off trait. In exchange for 180 Vitality, which is a 1,800 hit point loss, 15% of all strike damage will be converted into barrier. In any kind of group situation, this will max out your barrier, 50% of your health, permanently, rendering you almost indestructible. Barrier is often better than healing because it can overcap your health pool and prevent any real hit point loss, allowing you to be healed up while shielded if you somehow manage to take damage. This trait makes Scrapper probably the most durable build in a raid environment. As long as you keep pumping, you will not die. It's also a very easy way to tank encounters if required without sacrificing any damage whatsoever. But what else do we get in exchange for all of those hit points? Well, that's Function Gyro, and it's quite a nifty tool. Function Gyro is the F5 ability for Scrapper, and it allows you to summon up to three gyros at range to revive or finish targets. In player versus environment, this will be used as a very handy revival tool. It revives just like you, and will be able to quickly get allies back up on their feet. The cooldown increases per target hit, but it will be back up very quickly, so use it liberally. It also applies even more super speed in the area of effect, and summons a lightning field, which has some fun synergy with this build that we'll talk about later. The trait that will change around a bit is the Grandmaster. Kinetic Accelerators is a very interesting trait. In addition to converting 10% of your power to concentration, it also causes super speed you apply to grant quickness, making you the ultimate speed lord. Use this when you want to play the quickness build. Remember, each gyro and your heal skill and function gyro will apply area super speed. That's a lot of quickness. If quickness isn't needed, then break out Applied Force. It makes Might give 15 extra power, in other words, a free 375 power, and also applies a stack of stability when you gain Might above 10 stacks, every 10 seconds. This will further increase DPS thanks to Object in Motion. Other trait lines pale in comparison to the Mighty Scrapper, but we do in fact use two more to complete the build. Firearms and explosives do one thing very well, 
massive damage. We get a free 25% critical strike chance from high caliber and hematic focus, free fury and extra ferocity while having fury from no scope, and modified ammunition throws 2% damage modifiers all over the place. Each condition on your targets will give you 2% extra damage on that target. Bear in mind that in raids or many group situations, enemies might have 10 conditions on them or more fairly commonly for a massive 20% extra damage. Sharpshooter and Serrated Steel are some free bleeding and more bleeding damage which Scrapper will apply incidentally but not exactly a main focus of the build. In Explosives, it's more of the same. Glass Cannon is an extra easy 10% damage while over 75% hit points, which is extremely easy to maintain thanks to the Omega Barrier from Impact Savant. Explosive Temper causes explosion abilities to give 20 ferocity, stacking up to 10 times, which will be maintained well thanks to the myriad explosive skills we'll be using. Shaped Charge is yet another 0.5% damage per stack of vulnerability on targets, which will, again, very likely always be maxed out at 12.5% for 25 stacks in group environments. And as usual, the fun never ends in damage dealing trait lines because Big Boomer is the final damage modifier, with an added bonus of a free 200 health a second when detonating an explosion on an opponent, which is great for recovering if you ever manage to take health damage. Big Boomer's 10% damage is active whenever you have a higher percentage hit points than your target, which is extremely easy to maintain thanks to the scrapper's nigh invulnerability, especially in an organized group situation. The last two traits in explosives do not feature impressive percentages, but they do still do something. Steel Pack Powder is some nice vulnerability application, and Explosive Entrance means that even when you dodge, you still explode. Vulnerability is quite a potent feature of any explosives-based engineer build, and although you won't quite maintain 25 stacks on your own, Power Scrapper and one other vulnerability source definitely will. Maintaining 25 stacks of vulnerability on your targets in any endgame group environment is absolutely essential as it is a huge damage loss to not do this. Yet another triumph for the scrapper. Now let's take a look at what skills we'll be using. The basic skill loadout that doesn't change across the quickness and pure damage variant is as follows. Hammer, Grenade Kit, Shredder Gyro, and Mortar Kit. The gyro and grenades are for big super speed and damage, and mortar kit has some excellent utility with blinds, chills, and minor healing. The third utility slot depends on what you're playing. Blast gyro is used in the quickness variant for more super speed and therefore more quickness, and rifle turret is used in the pure damage variant because it removes numbers from your target's hit point pool and gives you a fun button to mash off cooldown. Blast Gyro has the added bonus of being a launch built in for some great break bar breaking. Be careful not to troll your team by disrupting stacked opponents though. Engineer's profession mechanic is tool belt skills. These skills change depending on your utility choices and they are equally handy. Blast Gyro has a stun break and extra super speed from bypass coating, which is bonus quickness for the quickness build as well. And Shredder Gyro has spare capacitor for free damage and a decent length days for more crowd control. Grenade Barrage is great for world versus world one-shot montages and massive damage. Your choice of heal skill depends a bit on what you need. If you're playing quickness, take Medic Gyro for maximum super speed application. And if you aren't, go for AED for a solid defensive option and yet another defiance breaking tool belt skill. You can also opt for Healing Turret or simply Medic Gyro again for some more group support if you don't need the crowd control zap. Medic Gyro's tool belt skill is a useful one too. It applies a good amount of area protection and is a water field. It can be very clutch if you need some instant protection and your supports are slacking. Engineer utility skills are very versatile in their nature, so don't be afraid of a little mad science. You could take Bulwark Gyro for team damage reduction, stability and projectile blocking, Purge Gyro for excellent cleanse, Sneak Gyro for stealthing up, Elixir R for some revival, Personal Battering Ram for Omega Break Bar destruction, or even Throw Mine for boon removal and decent damage output. You don't have much flexibility to fit these skills in on the quickness build, but on the full damage variant, you can drop Rifle Turret without too many worries. 
Hammer was mentioned at the beginning of this segment, and it is indeed our weapon of choice. Fitting with the theme of this build, it's a fantastic weapon for being right in on the action. The auto attack is a powerful chain with good damage in addition to applying might and vulnerability. Try to finish the chain as each strike does more damage than the previous one, with the final strike dealing twice as much damage as the first. Electro Whirl is a high damage ability that also reflects. Watch out for that. It's an explosion and a whirl finisher as well. Use it often because it's both powerful and has a short cooldown. Rocket Charge is an excellent utility weapon skill. Not part of the rotation, but it can be used to move around quickly or to avoid damage. It's a long distance leap comprised of three attacks. While leaping, the engineer also evades, avoiding damage, just like a normal dodge. It can be slightly unreliable though, as you only evade while leaping, not during the attacks. Much more reliable, however, is Shock Shield, a true tanking ability. It's a channeled block that you can move while casting that also does damage and grants a small barrier. This is fantastic for survival, and with a pretty short cooldown, it's always going to be around for blocking attacks that even the massive barrier of Scrapper can't handle. Thunderclap rounds out the weapon with a devastating long-range lightning field that pulses high damage and stuns targets hit by the initial blast. This is a good time to talk about lightning fields. This build has the ability to create many lightning fields and also combo with them effectively. In particular, Rocket Charge has two leap finishes, which will daze targets if executed. Similarly, Whirling in a lightning field applies vulnerability, and Electro Whirl and Shredder Gyro will do this repeatedly. Thanks to combo Combo finishers prioritizing your fields, even if the screen is filled with random combos, with careful cooldown management, you can get very good value from this synergy, particularly the extra break bar damage from leaping. Moving on to gear, it is very straightforward. Full Berserker with Scholar Runes, with Force and Impact Sigils on the hammer. For the Quickness variant, just swap out the Impact Sigil for a Concentration Sigil and then take full Diviner Trinkets. These can also be used on other builds like Alacrity Renegade, so you can get some bonus value there. You don't exactly need this much boon duration, but it's useful to overcap a bit to guarantee uptimes. If you're truly dedicated to the cause, throw on some Power Infusions to get that extra 2% damage. For delicious food, grab butternut squash soup, or even better, the Ascended version with added damage reduction, peppercorn crusted sous vide steak. Regular sharpening stones will suffice for the enhancement, or for the quickness build, try some potent loosen oil for some more boon duration if necessary. If you want to tank on this build, an easy way to do it is to grab a knight's hammer and then use a toughness food like spicy marinated mushroom or plate of peppered clear truffle ravioli. This will put you over 300 toughness, so even Firebrand Tome of Courage funkiness shouldn't interfere. Don't bother with the food if there's no Firebrand to interfere here. The 10% damage reduction on Ascended Power Food is amazing, and you don't actually care about toughness for survivability, because that comes from the infinite barrier and shock shield on Hammer. You just need to hold the boss's attention. On non-toughness tanking fights like Soulless Horror or Kadeem, you don't need to change your build at all. You could also use a single toughness infusion or just the food, but in the wild west of pug raiding, eh, you can't be too careful. The numbers are all out of the way now, so let's talk about how to play. The core skill priority comes down to using Thunderclap, Electro Whirl, Gyros, and Grenade Barrage as often as you can, and fitting in complete auto attack chains in between these abilities. You'll find it lines up quite nicely, particularly as every time you use Electro Whirl, you'll be able to go into Grenade Kit, use Shrapnel Grenade, and alternate between Freeze and Poison Grenade when they're off cooldown. Use the Rifle Turret Tool Belt skill Surprise Shot as often as possible if you are using Rifle Turret. Remember, it doesn't have a cast time, so you can use it while using other abilities. One minor thing to watch out for when running a huge amount of gyros is that super speed only stacks up to 10 seconds, and if you use everything at the same time, you'll probably overcap a bit and lose some uptime, which remember, is a damage loss because of object in motion. 
Weaving in spare capacitor, static shock, and even function gyro are damage gains, but make sure you save them if you know any break bars are coming up, or if you need to revive someone with the function gyro. If you're having trouble with quickness uptime on the quickness variant, then use function gyro off cooldown. It applies super speed and therefore quickness too. If problems persist, then just keep adding more diviner gear until they stop. Depending on group composition and your experience level, you can tweak your boon duration accordingly. If there's a lot of boon extension or extra quickness from other sources, you can easily get away with less, but if you want to play it safe, then feel free to go pretty hard. When playing a build like this, your boon uptime, in other words, group damage output, is priority over personal damage output, as patchy quickness is a more significant difference. Try to maintain as much damage uptime as possible. Barrier lasts for 5 seconds, but if you have more downtime than that, you'll become vulnerable. The best defense is a good offense. Just by pounding your targets, you'll be able to face tank more or less anything, especially with full raid buffs or with multiple targets to cleave for even more absurd barrier. This build comes with a lot of baked-in utility. Mortar Kit and Grenade Kit both have area blind abilities to deny enemy damage, and Mortar Kit's Flash Shell even pulses blind. In addition to this, many of the available control abilities are also area attacks, meaning you can lock down groups of enemies effectively and then cleave them down quickly. Use Function Gyro to either speed up revivals or revive a target that you can't reach, or just in a different location to where you need to be. Remember, it can affect multiple targets too, so aim it carefully for maximum value. Scrapper is incredibly durable. You can use the barrier generation to survive most attacks, particularly if it's sustained damage, because you'll easily outmatch it with damage to barrier conversion. If you need to stop attacking to revive or perform a mechanic, you can drop down pulsing attacks like Shredder Gyro, Spare Capacitor, or Thunderclap, and the damage from these skills will sustain you through whatever's hitting you while you peel people off the floor. Combo fields are a thing for this build, and it has a variety of them, and access to multiple finishers to utilize them. Leaping through water fields from Reconstruction Field or Mortar Kit will heal a fair bit, and as mentioned earlier, you can squeeze out even more break bar damage with good use of Lightning Fields from Thunderclap, Spare Capacitor, or Function Gyro, combined with Rocket Charge. Mortar Kit is a cornucopia of combo fields, including Chilling Ice Fields for Frost Aura, a Light Field for Condition Damage Reducing Light Aura, and even a Poison Field for Weakness Application. So, experiment and have fun! Finally, embrace grenades. Having a ranged option means you have no excuse for not constantly attacking your enemies. If your foe is extremely far away, you can even use Mortar Kit. It has slow projectiles, but an extreme 1,500 range, so there really is no escape from you. That's all you need to know to wield the power of the Scrapper. Go forth, my disciples, and spread the word of the indomitable hammer-wielding engineer. Thanks for watching, let me know if you have any questions, and of course, follow me everywhere and subscribe. I'll see you next time.